How's it going everyone? Larry from Larry News Belts here and today we are going to be going over the Austin Theory promo that just happened on Raw which in my opinion is the turning point in Austin Theory's entire career in the WWE. So obviously the big talk was that Austin Theory failed to cash in his money in the bank and myself included were kind of questioning that. We were going why did they do that? They could have easily given the money in the bank to someone else, or we're kind of going, does Triple H not like Austin Theory? You know, it was almost like he was going, eh, I, didn't, I didn't give Austin Theory the money in the bank, so why would I push him? But after watching this promo, I truly feel that Austin Theory is meant for something, and that I think Triple H and Creative have a lot of ideas and a lot of direction for him. So we're gonna go over this and break this down. It's gonna just see just how special this promo was. So let's do it, guys. Because you see, I was touted to be the next big thing and prove that on day one, and I did. I exceeded that expectation. And what did I do? I outgrew the ceiling of being the next big thing, and I became the face of the franchise. So basically he started, he's giving you a timeline of everything, right? He's going, when I first came, I did what I said I was going to do. I became Vince McMahon's like new chosen one. No matter what was happening, whether he was winning or losing, he was the guy that Vince was pretty much aiming to have as the next guy. And even in the background and in, in the dirt sheets, they're saying that he's like the next John Cena and all this stuff. And he says that I, I did everything that I said I was going to do. And people still continue to hate on me to this day because of that. Why? Because they can't relate. And the whole world looks at a person like me and wants to see me fail, wants to see me fall short of the expectation. That's just not going to happen. So this is him playing the heel part perfectly. He's going, the reason why you, you hate me is because you, you can't be me. You can't relate to me. And that's usually how celebrities are, right? A lot of us tend to, um, let's just keep it in the realm of wrestling, but when you look at the the Brian Danielsons, the Daniel Bryans, when you look at the, um, you know, like the underdogs, a lot of us tend to uh, relate to them because they're the underdogs. They're the people that aren't looked at as the people that are supposed to rise to the occasion, right? When you look at people like Roman Reigns, the reason why Roman Reigns is popular and is so big is because he represents the other side, which are, yeah, we might not relate to that, but a lot of people wish they can be that, right? That they're the head of the table, the tribal chief, they're like all power, the champion that never loses. He's cool looking, you know? If he walks in the room, it's like, damn dude, it's Roman Reigns, or who is that guy? You know, if Roman Reigns walked into a Starbucks, you would be like, Yo, who is that guy? You know, like that guy looks like he's going to kick everyone's ass in the room. So like, that's why he's, that's why Roman is so, uh, is so loved and looked upon is because he's got that, right? And when you look at someone like Austin Theory, you know, he hasn't done a whole lot to like, you know, it hasn't had like a cool promo or a cool catchphrase and his theme music isn't even that good. But he, you look at him and you're going like, uh, he's, you know, he's, he's being pushed. He's, you know, he's Vince McMahon's new guy, but he, I don't relate to that because a lot of people look at him and go and are in a way are kind of jealous because they're like, how come he's getting everything because he's big and buff and strong and looks like John Cena. So like, that's what he's talking about. He's going like, you can't relate to me, which means, but then he turns it around instead of going like making people like him, like I'm gonna show everyone that I deserve this. He goes, you can't relate to me because you can't be me. And he's putting down the fans, basically going, you're just, you just don't like me because you're jealous. So that's a good heel tactic and we're only 30 seconds into the promo. So let's, let's continue it. But for me, when I, when I think about last Monday, everybody thinks that I fell. Well, they're wrong. because I feel more alive than I... Okay, really quick. Did you see that pause? That little pause he had. I'm going to rewind it just a little bit. Right there. Because I... I'm trying to rewind Everybody it. Everybody thinks that I fell. Well, they're wrong. 
see that? That was beautiful. And the reason why is because he's saying everyone's wrong. But with that pause, he's basically, it's almost like he's still trying to convince himself. And that's good storytelling. Because that split second, he's telling everybody, he's showing the world without telling people that everyone's wrong, but he still kind of doubts that. And because he doubts that, it's getting him mad because he's he's like, he wants to prove everyone that they're wrong. And he needs to prove it to himself that, every, that everyone's wrong about him failing. And it bugs him that it's amazing how a little pause that's why a lot of people say like a lot of veteran wrestlers say slow things down when you're selling let people like be able to get involved emotionally involved in in the match the same thing can happen with the promo and that little short that he did was basically he could if he would have moved on to the next scene and said you know everyone is wrong about that i'm gonna prove everyone wrong and the blah, blah 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 you you might not have felt it but right there you felt that he's upset that people are saying that he failed and he's upset with himself that he failed, but he's doing everything he can to show people that he's not upset. So that's good on Austin Theory. Let's continue this. Cause I feel more alive than I ever have. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about that briefcase. Let's talk about that money in the bank contract. It was an anchor on Austin Theory. Look at Roman Reigns. Nobody's been able to touch him in the past two years, no one. And has he looked vulnerable? Well, whenever he does, which is rarely, the bloodline's there. Look at my cash-ins. I tried at SummerSlam. Brock Lesnar was there. Clash at the Castle, Tyson Fury was there. And if they weren't there, the bloodline certainly would have been. Roman Reigns is unstoppable, and that scenario of me cashing in, it doesn't exist. So, so uh, that's a funny place for me to pause. <laughs> so what did I... It's a funny place to pause too. I do. What did I put in my brain and decide to do? I thought, what is the best thing to do after this? Okay. So first off, he he doesn't need to, and it's not like he has to, but he, he put Roman Reigns over right there. He basically said, listen, I've done everything I can, and I just can't get to the championship. If it's not the bloodline, it's someone else. It's Brock Lesnar. If it's not Brock Lesnar, it's Tyson Fury. Why am I going to keep failing at this? He basically acknowledged Roman Reigns without acknowledging Roman Reigns in terms of the verbiage. He basically said, listen, I don't, I'm smart. I don't see myself beating Roman or, and, but then he put not even Rome, not only did he put Roman on a pedestal, but he also put a realistic atmosphere into it said listen no one has been able to beat roman and it's because of everything surrounding roman bloodline just every as outside aspect so i'm not going to sit here and waste my time on something that's possibly untouchable at this time so what does he do he's going to say now so i decided to think and move on to the next thing or the next person and that is going after one of the greatest champions of this past decade, Seth Rollins. And then right there, he pushes Seth Rollins to that next level. And I'm not saying Seth Rollins needed it, because you know he doesn't. This is what CM Punk was talking about going into business for themselves. When Adam Page went out and he decided to bury CM Punk... And if you want to see the video about that, I have a video explaining why CM Punk was mad. And before everyone jumps on my case, I feel that CM Punk, this will be, this could be another topic, another video. CM Punk handled the issue wrong, which is why he's at where he's at right now. But he had every right to feel what he was feeling because of Adam Page. You look at the situation and go, why is Adam Page trying to bring down the baby face that they've been trying to push this entire year? It's it's no business. It doesn't do business good for anybody except himself. Going here, why would Austin Theory, you know, bring up Seth Rollins like that? He put him over as one of the greatest champions in the decade, and which is putting over the United States Championship. It's because one, 
because Roman has the champ, the universal, undisputed universal championship held up, we all, no one's going to touch it for a while. So he's sitting there going, so what am I going to do next? I'm going to have to bring up the United States championship as something almost as important as universal champion. <clears throat> and not just that, I need to also put over the person who's holding the championship to prove that the champion and the championship is that important. And he did that. Not only did he put Roman on a pedestal, but he put Seth Rollins on that pedestal. And guys, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. And it was it's perfect. Like he is, I don't, you guys need to realize Austin Theory is stepping up right here. He is, he grew the beard and he is stepping up in this promo. He is putting people over because what happens, he's put Seth Rollins over. And then if he beats Seth Rollins, it puts himself over even more business for everyone. Austin gets it. And where was he? On his back, in the middle of that ring I had him beat. A-Town down and Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley pulled me out of that ring and mauled me like a madman. But if it wasn't for him, I would be a two-time United States champion right now, and I would have had the greatest cash-in. Worst cash-in ever. Now, before we get into this, Right after he put Seth Rollins on a pedestal, he then brought it back to himself and said, and I had him beat. Seth Rollins, one of the greatest champions of this decade, United States champion, and I had him beat. If it wasn't for Bobby Lashley, and then puts Bobby Lashley over and he mauled me. But it was a steps into all the way into putting himself over. Seth Rollins, the best of the decade, he's United States champion. Adam beat. Heel, heel 101. You know what, Dolph? I am sick of people talking down to me like I'm a kid. I'm done being the youngest this, the youngest that, the future, the next big thing, or a protege. I am the now. That's it. I am the now. He literally, and I, I hope he gets rid of the whole selfie thing and everything it seems like that's what he's going he literally just put everything in the past is out the door he's no longer going to be sitting there being i'm the youngest champ i mean the youngest money in the bank i'm the first this i'm the it's done we are now seeing the now austin theory and with just this promo we are we're not even three minutes into this promo and he has already made leaps in character development more than some wrestlers have done in years. In years. And he's doing it in three minutes. Unbelievable. And I'd love to prove that to you if you meet me out in that ring and I can show you that I have no more excuses. None. I am excited about what happens next with Austin Theory. I hope he loses the vest, loses the tights, gets long boys on. I've shown pictures before and I'll show it to you like right now. He looks legit with long cargo or long uh, cam camo pants. But that's besides the point. We saw something tonight and I hope everyone remembers this promo, November 14th, 2022. We saw something special. In my opinion, obviously nothing touches the Stone Cold Steve Austin promo, those type of promos that put people over to that next limit. You know, you have people like John Cena who had gradual promos that pushed them over. We had The Rock that had those gradual, but then you had the pipe bombs like CM Punk, and then you had the Stone Cold Steve Austin, King of the Ring, and you get moments like that. This was Austin Theory's moment. Obviously, he's still got to perform with matches, continue to grow. But if he becomes the big star, which in my opinion, he can be. November 14, 2022 is the promo that started it all.
But anyways, guys, what do you think? Do you think this is the moment for Austin Theory? Do you think maybe I'm putting too much emphasis into it? Or do you believe, like myself, that he's going to be the now superstar? Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have tons of wrestling content from promo breakdowns like this to match breakdowns to wrestling belt reviews to just simple fun comedy stuff. I do everything wrestling and every subscription would help my channel. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for checking it out and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.